You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, and here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you may on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Echo TJ's Path. So, guys and gals, let's go ahead and just jump right back into it, shall we? Please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes of my entertainment. Let's jump right in. Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. Okay. <clears throat> Still, the paper immediately splits in two this time, and I have to hold them up together as I read it. It's dark, to the point where I have to have Carl hold up his phone to give me some light. Good job, but that was a little easy, right? Next week we'll find out how brave you are. I know this was already a scary test for Chase, but that doesn't count. Do you... do you really remember? Get a flashlight and make sure Leo is with you. Here it is! Stay in school! It will be cool! We'll have fun in 301! I hope you don't die! Sid. We're all quiet for a moment, and TJ giggles. I look at him, but he's covering his mouth with a hand so I can't see him smiling. That's not really a riddle, is it? I smile. Go easy on him, he was a kid. Sorry. So the old school in room 301, I assume that's what he meant by a test of courage. Sh shoot uh, He went in there all by himself? I wouldn't even do that now! Yeah, that is a little weird. The feeling that some... What are you doing, you silly cat? <laughs> silly boy. Yeah, what are you doing? All these wonderful kitties. <laughs> a feeling that something isn't right grows inside my chest. Well, we have to break the law to get in there. We'd be trespassing. Jenna glances at TJ because we all know the Lynx wouldn't dare break the law. Besides, it's getting late. Maybe we can go check it out tomorrow. One of us can go in for you, TJ. TJ looks up at the sky where stars are starting to twinkle through the branches. Well, if we're going to trespass, we should do it at night, right? Jenna's mouth falls open. What? TJ looks flustered. I mean, we don't have all that much time left here, so we should probably get as much much of it done as we can. So, you're okay with breaking the law? Well, yeah, if it means we can finish this. We all stare at him. I, I don't know what else to say. I just really want to get this done. It, it feels right. We're quiet for a moment before Carl claps his hands together. Well, all right, then. Let's go. We're still got a few hours before I'm going to bed. Jenna sighs loudly. All right, but I want to get back before 10 so that I can finish my papers. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. Onward. Carl marches ahead of us, taking a running leap to cross the ditch. I look at TJ, who's still looking fidgety again. Hey, we'll finish this before we have to leave, okay? TJ gives me a small smile. Okay. Oh, I did a creepy-ass looking school. Carl says that a cop still patrols Echo randomly at least once a night. Because of that, we let Jenna sit out in the car and keep watch. If someone shows up, she'll text us, which should give us enough time to get out of the back of the school. It'll still look suspicious as hell, but as long as we're not caught on the property and have some sort of excuse, we should be fine. At least that's what Carl says. We stand there in front of the door, and I notice that a couple chains hang loosely off the door. They're locked to be found. Well, at least that hasn't changed. Carl shrugs. Teenagers break it all the time! No point in putting a lock back in every time! Carl gives the door a shove and it slides open very slowly, letting out an unearthly squeal as it does. The three of us stand there, staring into the darkness. TJ fidgets next to me. Having second thoughts? No! His voice comes out in a crackly squeak that Carl snorts at. Just, just so dark! Nighttime is a way of doing that, my man! Good thing I changed, charged my phone before we left! Carl takes out his phone from his pocket and holds it up before turning on the light. Uh, mine's almost dead. We can share. Carl sweeps the light inside the revealing graffiti-covered walls and dirt-covered floors. Nice! I look back and see Jenna staring at us from the car. She gives me a thumbs up. Haunted school. Just what this game needed. I inhale deeply. Well, let's go. I take out my phone and step inside and TJ follows me. Carl stands next to us, spinning in a circle. Well, it's not that creepy. Okay, so the rooms here are the 200s. TJ points at the doorway next to us, a small label above it reading 203. So that means we have to go up one floor. Carl sweeps his light around and points to the staircase. Shall we? Those things better be stable. Carl points his light up to the up to the staircase. I can see some graffiti up there. It's probably it's probably gonna be it's probably fine. The ram leads the way, at first tentatively setting a hoof on the first step before testing the next. Yeah, it's all good! And with that, he strides up the stairs while TJ and I follow a little more hesitantly. Why don't they just demolish this place? Heard they wanted to turn it into a museum. Can't see why, though. 
Carl shines his light on the railing. The wood rotted and broken. Hey, do you guys remember when Chase saw someone staring out, staring from out, staring out from one of the windows up here? Oh my gosh! Please don't talk about this right now. Do you want? Do you, do you even remember that, Chase? Uh, yeah, actually, that was a long time ago. I hardly remembered it, but I do remember seeing a dark form in one of the windows. I'd have been positive it was just an object sitting in the room, but I'd wanted to tell my friend that I'd seen a ghost. It was nothing like what I saw in the trees. Thinking about it is creeping me out, though. Stop! E.G. whines as we reach the top of the stairs, then. Billy, trying to change the subject, points up at the door. Alright, 305, so maybe this way. Chase, let me see your phone. E.G. takes it from me and points it up at the next door over. Yep, 304, so the last one down. He hands me back my phone and stands there a moment. Carl chuckles. Wanna go first? You scared? TJ glares at him. Come on, guys, you wanna get out of here too? Okay, okay! Carl leads the way again, down the hall to the very end. There's more stuff in the way than on this floor, with a lot of desks and chairs. Carl keeps his light up, counting down the, do counting down the doors. 303 and 302! Ah, 30, the fuck?! TJ jumps a foot into the air and I point my light at Carl. What?! Carl turns around sheepishly, rubbing his hip. <laughs> Ran into this stupid desk, right like a mother! Really, Carl? TJ clings to me, taking a deep breath. But here's the door! Carl points the light back up above the door, and sure enough, there's a 301 up there. TJ and I stand next to him, both staring into the dark room. Hey, I think this might actually be the room you saw the, you saw the thing staring at you from! Carl? There's a warning tone in TJ's voice. I rub my chin. Actually, yeah, I think it is. TJ sighs loudly and closes his eyes. Guys, please, can we just... Yeah! Yeah! Carl thrusts his hand into TJ's side as he yells, seeing TJ into a hysteric fit of screaming and grabbing onto me. I stumble as I try to keep the links from rending my flesh with his claws. Oh shit, sorry! Ow! Carl reaches out to, I assume, comfort TJ, but gets a backhand across the face in response. You ass! I watch the two of them with wide eyes, never having seen TJ so indignant. Carl stares back, a hand up, a hand up to his cheek. Whoa! All right, let's start looking. As if nothing had happened, TJ takes my phone and strides into the room, his tail twitching in irritation. I can't believe you slapped me! Carl calls after him, but gets no response. I smile, trying not to laugh as I walk past the ram. Can you? He asks me. Can you? He asks me, rubbing his cheek as he follows me in. Hey, you asked for it. Probably not the best time to be scaring him. Yeah, whatever. What the hell are we looking for anyway? I look around. From what I can see, there's not much left in the room. A few desks are pushed up against the wall, and aside from a chalkboard and a map at one end of the room, there's nothing else. Hmm. You kiddies behave. I go over to stand by TJ at the other end of the room, looking at the desks. There's not much in here, is there? TJ sweeps the light across the room, frowning. Not really. He points the light at Carl, who's at the other end of the room by, by the chalkboard. Anything written on the chalkboard, Carl? Carl shines his light on the chalkboard and gasps. What? There's... It's a, it's a whole lot of dick! <laughs> Carl steps to the side, pointing his light at the board, and sure enough, it's covered in countless drawings of dicks. TJ sighs. I mean, we were bound to hit a roadblock eventually. I trail off, staring at the window at the far end of the room where I see a small-looking box on the ledge. What's that? Oh god, I noticed how the music stopped. A point, TJ shines a light over at it. A metal toolbox glints back at us. TJ immediately walks over to it and I follow him. Carl joins us as TJ fiddles with the latches, popping them open. There's a soft creak as he lifts the lid, a tray extending out as he does. And there, sitting in the tray, is another folded piece of paper. There's no way. Yeah, that makes no sense! Why not? TJ gently picks up the note, handing me back my phone. Shine that on this- shine that on this for me, please? Someone would have taken it by now. Well, they didn't, see? TJ had unfolded it, and he, sh and he shows me the handwriting, the exact same we'd seen on the other two notes. I frown, but I don't say anything more. Maybe it did just sit there for the past ten years, no one wanting to bother with an old-looking toolbox. But this place is broken and irregularly, with the whole point being to tag, to, being to tag or take stuff. Someone definitely should have taken it by now. This was all on top of the idea that Sidney came in here as a little kid just to hide a note. Something isn't right, and I'm starting to feel uneasy. I don't have time to dwell on that, though, as TJ begins to read. So, so you went to the school. You found it with some tools. Next to go, next go to where I sleep. It's where I keep my secrets, something Chase can't keep. Sid. It's silent for a moment as we all take that in. I feel my face flush and my fur prickles. I wonder what the hell that last line is supposed to mean. Carl and TJ don't look at me, but I can sense that they want to. 
Carl was the first one to make a sound, clearing his throat. So, Sydney's bedroom, maybe. That's what I'm thinking. This is a kid writing this stuff, so it should be pretty straightforward. I shake my head. Really, guys? TJ finally looks over at me. What? There's a defensive tone in TJ's voice, and I know he... And I know he knows what I'm about to say. This is, uh... This is way too much. TJ frowns at me. Too much what? You know... I trail off, not used to TJ looking at me this way. He lets the silence drag on, and I look over to Carl for help. He clears his throat again. You know, TJ, this is pretty weird. Like, someone would have probably taken it by now. Why does that have to be the case? People could have just missed it. We almost did. TJ looks back down at the note, holding it in both paws. I reach out for it, but TJ pulls it back, like I'm going to try and steal it from him. Um, can I look at it for a sec? TJ hesitates, then holds it out to me slowly. I eye the links as I reach out, taking the note from him gently. TJ's behavior alone has me deciding that this whole thing is definitely a bad idea. The note looks old, just like the first two we found. The writing looks the same, too. Maybe it is possible that Sydney came in here and had to hide the note, wanting to make, us, make this scavenger hunt especially scary for us. But still, I can't shake the feeling that something is off about it. I need to find time to really think about this. For now, though, I hand the paper back to TJ, who takes it from me gingerly, as if worried it'll fall apart. Carl! Uh, mm, wrong voice. Carl, do you know who lives in Sydney's old house now? Carl tips his head back as if thinking. Huh, I can't remember his name, but he's a red panda, I think. Well, let's go then. I give a start. To the house? His family moved out right after it happened. There's no way it's, it's still there, TJ. The other two were. This is different, though. Might as well try. I can't imagine going up to the new homeowner and telling him about Sydney and his posthumous scavenger hunt and him just letting us in. But the determined look on TJ's face tells me right away that I won't be able to talk to talk him out of it. I sigh. Well, can we at least do it tomorrow? I look at my phone. It's almost ten. TJ doesn't say anything as he looks out the window, his face barely visible in the darkness. Carl shifts around next to me. Yeah, I'm getting pretty tired. Well, we'll have all day tomorrow. TJ suddenly turns around and heads for the door. Fine, but we are going. I, I am, at least. Carl glances at me, probably feeling as uneasy as I am. Hey, I'm coming too. Just think it'll be easier. TJ doesn't respond, and we make the rest of the, treach make the, rest of the treacherous journey out of, out of the school in silence. Jenna looks up from her phone as I slide into the driver's seat. Find anything? Yeah. Another note? Yeah. Well, what did it say? I busy myself with searching my pockets for the keys, so Jenna turns in her seat to look, at, to look back at Carl and TJ. Well? Next one is at Sydney's old house. What? Really? Yes, we're going there tomorrow. TJ doesn't offer anything more, so Jenna turns back around in her seat and gives me a look. She seems to sense the mood, though, and doesn't question any further. As I stick the key in the ignition, TJ speaks up again. Chase, what did he mean by you not keeping secrets? A moment, of silence a moment of silence goes by before I answer. I don't know, or I don't remember. It's been a long time. I lay awake next to TJ, listening to the Lynx's steady breathing. I've been tossing and turning for the past three hours, trying to get some sleep, but my mind won't settle. This whole scavenger hunt has left me with such a bad taste in my mouth. Something about it is especially unsettling, and I've turned it over and over in my mind, examining it from every angle, and now I'm sure of it. I saw that fox hanging in the forest after si after Sydney died. That's why I was there in the first place. That's why I've been so sad. I turn over on my side, gripping my pillow in both paws as I stare at the wall, still listening to TJ's soft snoring behind me. So how the hell is any of this happening? It's scary, but not because I think Sydney's ghost is writing, is writing scavenger hunts or some stupid shit like that. No, someone wrote the notes and is pretending to be Sydney, and planted them around the town for us to find. And someone is likely one of us. Leo, Carl, Jenna, Flynn, or even TJ. Are any of us sick enough to do something like that? And if it is, and if so, who? I try to remember if I told anyone about that incident in the forest before the day, but I honestly can't remember. Apparently my mom had told someone about some people about it, Jenna's parents for one. But I really can't imagine Jenna being among the aforementioned. Whoever's writing them seems to like mingling, singling me out too, mentioning the forest and how I told the secrets. I roll back to stare at the ceiling and start wondering about TJ. He's been acting really strange the past few days, his bright, cheerful demeanor almost completely gone after we started the treasure hunt. I guess it's possible that he's upset enough to do something that's as crazy as this. Maybe it could make him feel like he's like he's connecting the per connecting to the person he he'd watched die to uh, die over a decade ago. Maybe he did it a long time ago, and it's only now that we've come across them. Maybe he can't remember because he buried those memories. Those papers do seem pretty old.
but I can't shake the feeling that this person has it out for me in some way. I think about how Carl was the one who find the first letter, but I almost immediately dismiss the idea that Carl might be involved. He would have no reason to do it. Unless... The only other person I can even imagine doing this is Flynn. He was the one most upset about Sidney's death, aside from TJ. Carl and Flynn seem to have grown pretty close over the past year or so. Could the two of them be involved somehow? It's pretty sp suspicious that it would just show up in Carl's basement. I roll back to my side, preferring to stare at the wall. I don't like suspecting my friends like this, but this whole thing is messed up on so many levels, and I'm really worried about TJ. Depending on how this all ends, it could make things even worse for him. Considering how Flynn treated TJ at the river, I'd be surprised if it's leading up to something terrible. And on top of all that, there's the insidious way that these rhymes refer to me. I decide that I'm going to have to do something after, the, after we find the next note, depending on what it says. If we even find it at all. I'm hoping that we don't. Yeesh. If you go in, I'll give you a dollar. No! Five bucks. No! Ten. No! You could buy, like, 20 candy bars with that money. I'm not going in. All right, all right, quit yelling. Carl and I swing, sing, Carl and I swing side by side, synchronizing our legs so that we swing back and forth at the same time. As always, it doesn't work because Carl's so much heavier than I am. The wind feels good on my fur, finally cooling me down after being out in the heat all day. Toby sits on the top of the slide next to us, watching with a bored look on his face. It's my turn, Chase. In a minute. It's been like 15 minutes. Nuh-uh. Toby sighs and sits back, pouting. I look back over at the old school and smile. But if you go inside, I'll let you... No! Toby's shout, Toby shouts seem to echo around us and I giggle. Fine, fine. We swing a little longer, the rhythmic squeaking of the chains being the only sound. When Sydney's coming, when Sid, when's Sydney coming back with the popsicles? He's taking forever. Maybe his mom caught him and made him stay home. Ah! Carl leans far back in the swing and I feel the entire thing shift around. I wonder if it's going to collapse. We should go to your house, Chase. It's too hot. I want to swing. I lower my feet and let them kick through the dirt as I slow myself down, sending a cloud of dust in the air. This talk about Sydney reminds me of something. Something I'd been told about yesterday, and now that he isn't here... Hey guys, my mom told me something about Sid yesterday. Toby's already slid down the slide and walked up the next to me, holding on one of the chains on the swing as he tries to push me out of the seat. Don't push me, Toby! Do you, don't you want to hear it? It's a secret! I move to stand between the two swings as Carl kicks his hooves into the dirt next to us. Keep swinging, Carl! I want to swing with you! Wait, what's the secret? Swing, Carl! Wait a minute, it's really weird! I seems to finally catch Toby's attention and he settles down. What? Carl and Toby stare at me, and for the first time I feel a little worried about yelling about telling them. But having their full attention like this is kind of cool. You know what happened to Sid's dad a while ago when school started, right? Yeah. Carl's completely stopped on the swing now, staring at me. Well, my mom says the cops think it's really weird what happened. Sidney's dad died. He's in heaven now. Toby says matter-of-factly and starts to swing a little again. Even if you're a Mormon, you can go to heaven. My dad said so. Yeah, but do you know how he died? I start whispering and look over my shoulder at the dirt road to see if Sid is coming. It's empty for now. He accidentally got shot when he was hunting with Sid. That's what the adults told us, that he was accidentally shot, maybe while he was loading his gun. My mom said they aren't sure if that really happened, though. What do you, what do you mean? Toby seems to have taken interest again and stopped swinging, staring at me. Well, maybe Sid did something. Carl frowns. Like, Sidney did it? I mean, I don't know, but my mom said to be careful around him, just in case. Toby's eyes suddenly widen even more as he suddenly understands. Sidney killed his dad? Shh! Toby flinches as I grab his muzzle with one paw, squeezing it shut. You have to keep it a secret! Toby just sits there, staring at me. Carl does the same. I kind of wish that I hadn't told them. I don't know, though. My mom just said to be careful. That's it. It might have been an accident. I talk kind of fast, like I'm trying to take back what I'd said earlier. I'm going to go ahead and pause it right here, guys. Wow, that is fucked up. Oh my goodness. It's just a rumor, though. It's just a rumor. Still. An echo? If anything is possible. Anyway, y'all, thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. If you're super thanks, or tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!